Welcome back to Tabletop Glory, my name is Graham Johnson, and today we're going to be talking about Dungeons and Doggies. Specifically, we're going to be painting up the Greyhound Monk. Now, I actually had a lot of fun working on this miniature. I always have fun painting up these Dungeons and Doggies. I have several of them in my collection, and today we're just going to be focusing on the one. I wanted an easy project to kind of warm back into the swing of content creation. After taking my big break in January, it's been kind of hard to get back into content creation as both a hobby and as a regular occurrence. Uh, I really enjoyed my break, although I did focus on trying to get my hobby space all cleaned up. If I showed you the room right now, you probably wouldn't believe me, but we've made some great strides in kind of getting things put away. And as it turns out, it's really positively affected my mental health, and I'm going to continue forward trying to keep this room as clean as possible. Because despite being able to see all of my work in progress being a great source of inspiration, it's also turned out to be a great source of stress and feeling overwhelmed without having the desk space that I used to have. There seems to be some kind of connection between that, which is really interesting. But anyway, I've blabbed on enough. Let's get started with today's video. Now I'm going to be doing some speed painting techniques in this video and I know that's a bit contradictory to our last big video where I said I'm not a huge fan of speed painting and it's true I'm not a huge fan of speed painting but in this video I'm going ahead and I'm doing a similar method to the dry brush method but instead of dry brushing in black or starting out with a black base tone and then working my way through the whites I'm starting off with a gray tone because the skin on the dog is gray I'm going ahead and using non oil as a black wash all over everything and then I'm working my way up gradually through the dry brushes till I'm at a concrete color adding more and more white into my gray and brightening things up and dry brushing all the way up until my final tones. Now I noticed on a lot of greyhounds that their throat and their tummies tend to be kind of a bright white or a bright gray so I went ahead and added a ton of white into my gray that I already used to kind of clear up all of the skin tones and get rid of that coffee staining and I just went ahead and stippled that in around the neck just to add some variety so it wasn't a solid straight line and I would normally put that along the belly as well but because this miniature was already attached to its base it was kind of hard to get in there so I just left well enough alone. I used what little paint was left on my brush after this to just kind of do a little bit of overbrushing around the face to kind of give this dog a little bit of age. Now when Contrast Paints first came out, I was at the height of my game store, so we actually ordered a whole bunch of them and they sent us a whole set early, so I had a bit of a play around, and I learned that if you paint other colors under it, it acts just like an ink would. And so that's what we're doing here, we're using pink to go ahead and pre-shadow areas instead of using black. That'll give us more of a vibrant orange once we layer up our yellows and our oranges and I really like the final effect. It's a bit on the subtle side, but I really love the way that the colors blend together, and I think it works a lot better than if I had built up the layers going from yellow to orange. Working with contrast, yander, and yellow, I'm gonna go ahead and work over the entire model on all the places that I want to look like this orange leather, and then we're gonna go ahead and put a second coat on and for that, we're actually going to be using the wash, or also sometimes called a shade, of Fugan Orange. Now with the Fugan Orange, we're going to be working mostly in the recesses and anywhere we want a really nice vibrant pop of orange. On those edges, those highlights, we're wanting to leave as much of the yander and yellow as we can because that's going to do all the highlighting for us. So we won't need to come back in with some yellow or some brighter oranges later. We'll just be able to leave it the way that it is. Moving on to all the accessories, and despite how few there are, they're really well modeled. Now there's this little gourd thing which I assume is supposed to be his water pouch, or maybe a component of some kind for what little magic this character might be able to do. I'm just mixing up some reds that were already on my palette. Uh, pretty much any color you could really paint this if you want it to be a more natural color it would probably be a similar color to what we've already done the leather in and I didn't really want that I wanted something that was going to stand out so I chose red 
I also ended up mixing a tiny bit of red into my browns to do all of the little pouches that are hanging off of him as well. And we're just going to mix up a slightly brighter color of each of these to do the highlights, focusing on the upper third of each of these little components just to give them a little pop of color for those highlights. Using Wraith Bone to do all the little straps, I was using Titan Buff from Golden, but it's the same color as Wraith Bone. And we're just going to go ahead and put that all over all these little straps. Now you could go and put some kind of a brown wash on top of them, but I really like just how much they popped compared to the orange and how bright and vibrant it was. So I decided there was no point in kind of putting washes over them or trying to tint or change the colors at all. And I just left it nice, bright, and vibrant. Now I really wasn't sure what these orbs around his neck were supposed to be. There's a few magical items in D&D that I could have painted them to look like. However, I thought green would be a nice vibrant color that would really draw your attention to their face. Considering that he's a mostly gray dog, I was really concerned that you weren't really going to look at his face. So I wanted a nice vibrant pop of color that was completely different from anything else on the miniature so far that would draw your attention toward his face. And so I wanted to work my way up through the greens, and I started with the darkest green I had on my palette, and I slowly worked my way up through the colors, covering up less and less of the previous color until I just had a little pop of moot green in the tiniest upper bit of each of these orbs, and I called it a day after that. Normally I put some kind of wash to kind of unify the colors, but I really liked the effect that not putting that wash on gave them and I was really happy with the final result. Army Painter Turquoise, well Mermaid Turquoise, is becoming one of my favorite colors to use. And I already had some on my palette from a previous project from a live stream I was doing the other day, so I decided let's put a little bit of contrast medium into the paint and kind of work it back to life and put this all over this I guess it's kind of either a shawl or maybe a scarf or something that's been wrapped around him as some kind of soft armor. I really like the way that this kind of just wraps around the miniature and really brings a nice vibrant pop of color. Now that does distract a little bit from the face like we just talked about earlier, however I don't think it takes away from it all that much. And when I put a blue wash in on top of it to darken those recesses, it really doesn't distract from the face. Now, speaking of blue wash, I used Draconoff Nightshade from Citadel, and I tried to focus it mostly in those recesses. I was a little bit concerned that if I went back in and re-highlighted the blue using the mermaid turquoise that it may distract from the face of the miniature, which is why I opted not to go and re-highlight those. However, if you're following along at home, you're more than happy to go ahead and re-highlight those and maybe even take it up to a more vibrant blue. Now I wanted to go ahead and bring some contrast back into the face a little bit and with it being quite white around the mouth I wanted to go ahead and mix up a little bit of a black wash to apply to the lips. If you've ever actually gotten a good look at a dog's mouth you realize oftentimes their lips are almost a pitch black. So I went ahead and added that in around the mouth just to add a bit of contrast and I also painted the tongue using Monster Ma by Reaper. It's a nice vibrant pink that I like to use for tongues but if you don't have anything by Reaper you can use something like Emperor children and just put a little bit of a darker red wash on top of it it comes out about the same color wrapping up some of the last of the detail bits we've got some metal that I want to go ahead and do now I didn't want to take away from anything that I had done or have it blend in a little too much which is why I stayed away from gold but the little shurikens and this little o-ring on his back got hit with some metal color Vallejo gun metal gray it's such a mouthful uh, but if you have lead belcher that'll work the exact same and then you can just highlight up and if you're not sure where to highlight up from there I recommend hitting it with some non oil and then just lightly reapplying it again uh, if you're using gun metal like I am you can mix in some Vallejo metal medium and then highlight up using that you don't need to go super vibrant with this stuff and in fact the only place that I even put a highlight on the metals on this miniature was that o-ring I didn't even bother highlighting the shurikens now I did a little bit of an experiment with the base. I went ahead and used some Armageddon Dunes and I used some Battlemire together. I kind of wet blended them a little bit. 
I wanted to give the illusion that it was running alongside of a pathway where maybe it's leading into the woods but we're not quite in the woods yet and there's more of a honed path that people have been following or maybe it's some kind of animal trail that it's running down and so I wanted to mix these two colors on the miniature to kind of blend those two ideas together. Now this part's a bit strange. I did a bit of dry brushing with some of my Wraithbone color as well as I went back and forth with my Agrax Earthshade. And I did like three or four coats. I'm not exactly sure how many back and forths of this I did. I just kind of did it till I was happy with the final result. And although the darker brown section got a little bit more highlight than I would have liked, all in all, I really liked the final look and I was ready to move on to adding my basing material. Now I used two different types of static grass tufts, one that's meant to look a little bit more like wildflowers and one that's just meant to look a little bit like grass. And although I don't trim it down in this footage, I am going to be trimming down the static grass a little bit just to make the flowers a little taller and a little more vibrant, a little more obvious. Also the static grass tuft is really tall compared to the dog and I wasn't happy with just how tall it was. I didn't have any shorter ones though and the only way that I could have gotten shorter static grass would have been to have gotten out all of my loose flock and found some that was shorter and I just really didn't want to put that kind of time in at this point. Uh, I've been working on this for way too long and I really needed to get it done and for as simple as this miniature is there's a good reason and I will get into that at the end of this video for those of you who care but let's go ahead and start wrapping things up now.